Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another day of Confessions of a Paper Addict's 20 Days of Cut Files. And you can get 25% off over in their shop, uh, the Etsy store, and the link to that is down below if you are interested. So I am using this awesome cut file. It is called Christmas Wishlist. Actually, it's Xmas Wishlist. And I really like the Santa in it. Um, and so I thought I was going to use them on this green plaid paper. So that's what I started with. I do end up changing the paper. So spoiler alert on that um, on that end. So I decided I was doing a double page today because I have four photos. And with that cut file being so large, there was no way I could fit all four of those photos onto one page. Um, I probably could have done like a page with a 6 by 12 insert. But I decided to go ahead and embrace the double page today. And in order to get those extra holly bits, I just uh, cut the portion of the cut file that has the holly multiple times. So I used the little knife tool and I just cut off the holly and uh, in my silhouette software. And then I went ahead and um, cut it multiple times, I think like seven times. So I'd have plenty of holly to draw across uh, both pages. And I'm liking how that looks. I also went in and took the leaves and I used the offset function in the silhouette software. And I offset them by a little bit um, in order to make it so I didn't have to sit there and fussy cut all of those leaves. So I basically off cut, uh, did an offset which makes the leaf a slight bit larger. Um, it's kind of like a... A shadow around it if you're not familiar with the silhouette software um, it creates like a, sh a shadow about around it and you can decipher how like large you want that shadow you can decide if you want it really big or really small um, and I just made it a tad bit bigger than the leaf leaves and the little holly berries and I cut them again and um, so that they're slightly bigger than the outline or the inside of the outline so that I can glue them on without having to cut anything by hand um, I think that's a really smart way to do things when you have like a lot that's in the same color or the same um, paper. So um, if you're not familiar with that, I'm sure there are probably videos on how to do it. Uh, although I have not actually gone out and looked for one because I kind of know how to do it myself. Anyway, so I took the Rustic Wilderness Oxide ink and I am just kind of ink blending a little bit of the edges of those uh, leaves so that they are not just a flat green and I'm not really fond of just using plain cardstock in my cut files because it, to me it feel, everything feels very flat because it's all um, one color. I like a little bit of variation in my papers because in life I feel like that's the way most things are. Nothing is like, at least in nature, nothing is really all one color. Um, petals on a leaf are, or on a flower are not usually all just one color. There's tends to be different tones or darknesses, darkness and lightness in them. So I like to kind of like make my stuff look kind of like that. So <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Um, I did back my photo on the right hand side with white paper. So I decided to create kind of a grid on the left hand page of my three photos. And then I'm going to use that same paper that I used for the envelope on the cut file and I'm going to fill in that fourth portion of the grid. I'm just measuring for how wide and how um, how tall I need that paper to be. So I'm just taking those dimensions and I'm um, going to go ahead and cut that and make it fit. And I really like the way that that looks and it brings that color across. Now I did not mind having the cut file on top of that green paper but then once I added the blue to this grid it just I don't know it, it needed it needed to change it was too much blue on top of that green paper so I went with this other paper this is the back side of that po polka dot paper and I believe it's called wish miss I'm could be wrong on that but um, I'm pretty sure yeah I'm pretty sure that's what it says at the bottom and so I really like that paper I love the other side of it I've used a lot of the the polka dot but um, it is by fancy pants in case you're curious but it is an older paper so I don't even know that you can get it anymore I've had it for a little while now and I have quite a bit of it because I bought it at Tuesday morning in a 25 pack so uh, I split that with my mom so I have quite quite a bit it's very useful 
<laughs> and so I, then I started playing around where I wanted to put these holly leaves. Um, they do end up kind of where they are currently situated, but I did play with moving them around because I didn't know if I wanted to have, uh, have the holly like on the two corners on the left hand side, or if I wanted it in the middle of the, the right hand side of the grid. And so I kind of played around with that and I didn't want it to exactly mimic the opposite page where the diagonal is going from uh, top left to bottom right. I wanted it so that it had some kind of difference. I didn't want it to be matchy matchy, which is kind of funny because I don't have a cut file on this side other than those holly leaves, but um, it's what it's what was in my mind. Like that's what I, the way I was thinking about it, I guess. And so, yeah, I just played with it. And then I did layer up a couple of them. Yes. I also played with putting them si uh, directly across from each other, but then it looked like ears sticking out or earmuffs. And I did not like that. Um, and so here we go. Here goes all the playing with it, you guys. Um, yeah. See now that looks too matchy matchy with the opposite page to me. So it, it gets changed. And I go with my original plan. And that is just kind of like a note to yourself. Usually your first instinct is probably the right instinct. <laughs> um, at least in this case it was. So I went ahead and I'm, I'm going to layer those up. So it has a little extra greenery, a little bit more layers than what um, the original holly has. But I am going to layer that one up too, just to add a little bit more to the top of that wish list. And so my photos are of everybody playing with their new Christmas toys after Christmas morning has happened and everybody's opened stuff up. My son is playing a computer game. My daughter has her Nerf gun um, pointed at my nephew. I, they must have been getting ready to play uh, together because um, she's not like being aggressive with it or anything. She's just smiling and pointing it at him. My dad's reading a book. And then there's another photo of my daughter and my niece playing rock band. And today's uh, prompt is actually music. And I probably could have used a musical cut file. But um, in my journaling, I am talking about the fact that they got rock band. Now, they had Guitar Hero first for quite some time. And this is on an Xbox um, and then when they got rock band, it took it to a whole new level because then everybody could play. You had vocals, you had two guitars and the drums. And so my niece got really good on the drums. My daughter loved to do the vocals. She could do the drums or the guitar as well, but the vocals were her, were her favorite. And then my son would usually play one of the guitars and they would, um, they would oftentimes rope me into playing the guitar as well. So um, I do have a little bit of rock band experience. I cannot say that I'm very, very good at it. Um, but, you know, for their age, I could pretty much keep up with what they were doing um, at the age that they were in these photos. Now, um, there was no way I could keep up on the drums. <laughs> I was really terrible at that. And the vocals, uh, I, I'm not great at the vocals. But anyway, it was fun. So my title is books, Nerf guns, computer games, and rock band. And basically that's what's in the photos. Um, because these photos were taken in 2007, I don't really know what else everybody got because I don't keep track of that stuff. And, um, you know, my memory cannot keep track of one year to the next, except for by what's in the photos. I could probably tell you a few other things by looking at other photos and seeing, uh, what was in them. But, um, these were kind of like the big things this year. And so uh, I wanted to just kind of make a note of that. And then I do talk about, like I said, in the journaling about how they would include me in their rock band um, game. And I thought that was a lot of fun and it was really nice to be included. Um, so we always had a really good time with that. So the dies that I am using there, those are a Tim Holtz die that I got at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if they still have them or not. Um, those are just the, the small alpha dies. And the nice thing about them, if you look for the ones from Tim Holtz, a lot of times he gives you multiple, a, um, of multiples of each letter or not maybe every letter, but like the A's, there's three or four of them. The E's, there's three or four of them. So you don't have to sit there and cut, you know, run through your die machine multiple times to, to create 
a word that has multiple E's or A's or I's or O's. Um, and it's not just the vowels. He gives you multiples of a lot, several of the others like S's and T's and stuff like that. So uh, definitely well worth the money, especially um, if you can hit, if they do have them at, at your Hobby Lobby and you can hit it when they have 40% off the Tim Holtz products. So uh, that was when I got them and it was definitely well worth the money and the investment. So I'm liking how it's looking. And then I decided I needed to pull in some more uh, ephemera. And so I went to some chipboard here and I really liked, I, I first pulled in those blue pieces that are at the top there, but they're kind of like the wrong shade of blue and nothing else matched them. So then I went to this chipboard that I have and I really like that snowman because the snowman kind of has the same feel that the Santa does. Um, they're both kind of like, I don't want to say childish, but they're both um, cute versus one being more realistic and th than the other. And so they kind of have the same feel about them. And so I pulled in other things from that same collection uh, with these snowflakes, the heart. I'm going to pull in a chipboard piece, I believe, that says Merry Christmas. Um, the little red piece underneath the photo on the right-hand side that says December 25th. I don't know where I got that. Um, that is not from this collection, and it's just a, a label type tab. It does; It's not chipboard. So this is from December Documented, which is from Simple Stories. Um, yay for me for holding that up, because I would have to go look that up for you. I'm getting better about doing that for you guys, holding things up so you can see what it is. And that way, it will also help me to remember to tell you what it is. Um, in the video. I do also try to link those things down below for you, although these are old collections, so I don't know that you can even find them anymore. So um, this little holly bit and the Merry Christmas are also from the same collection. Now I'm not going to do any journaling on that blue piece um, that is in the grid. I'm just going to leave it as is, and I think that's it looks nice. It's got plenty of stuff going on around it, and so that makes me kind of happy. I am going to pop the leaves of that holly up onto some foam because it is layered on top of that Merry Christmas chipboard. So that's why my acrylic block is sitting there. It's just holding it down while the glue dries. And then I did find another piece of, uh, or another blue um, snowflake to put on the, by the holly on the right hand side. That's what I'm doing there. I'm gonna date stamp it with my roller date stamp. That's from October afternoon. They don't make them anymore. And it is from uh, 2000 to 2010, I believe. And then I am pulling out some Christmas stickers, um, phrase stickers. And these are from the current Tim Holtz Christmas collection. So these you can definitely still get because this collection just came out. And um, the, it's all kinds of different Christmas phrases. And I think there are some phrases that are related to movies. Um, but it's got multiple pages, as you can see. And they're not all the same. They are all different. And I really like the way that they look. So you'll get to see those phrases a little bit better in the close-ups. Um, there's not a whole lot uh, else that I am going to be doing on this layout. So hopefully, um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember if I added sequins or not. I might add some sequins. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. But while I do that, I'll remind you that there are a bunch of people playing along with this hop. So go and check them out. Oh, look, there are sequins coming out, you guys. I thought I added sequins. Um, I'm just going to add three little silver sequins in each of the embellishment areas uh, just to add a little sparkle and to create a little visual triangle around each embellishment cluster. And by doing that, it's also creating like a visual triangle around the photo area because there's three clusters around the photo area on the grid side. Um, I don't always put three on a single page when I'm doing a double page layout because sometimes it's too much. But in this case, it worked out well. So again, <laughs> there are a whole bunch of people playing along with this hop. All of the links to their channels are down below. There's also a link to the Etsy shop for Confessions of a Paper Addict. And there is a link to the Facebook group for Confessions of a Paper Addict if you're not already a member of that group. Um, you can be a member of that group. You don't have to uh, buy anything or anything like that. Um, and she does occasionally give out free files, so be on the lookout for that if you are in that group and you have a die cut machine or a digital die cut machine that you would like to uh, use with her files. So 
you can find those over there and they're only available for a short time though so you don't it's not like they're there for um, forever so you got to get them when when she puts them up so here is my double page layout I hope that you enjoy it and um, have found some inspiration today if you have questions or comments you can leave those down below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can and if you uh, wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button, I'd really, really appreciate that. And if you don't mind subscribing, if you aren't already subscribed, I would love that too. Um, I did note that I didn't tell you that I used a little tiny stamp set from Waffle Flower, I believe, to create those little musical instruments in my text. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye-bye.